Hi, I'm Phileas Stain, and as you know by now, I'm the Safari expert. And I'll be honest with you, I hadn't planned to make this video just yet, but my inbox has been overflowing with messages from people saying, when are you going to do the second video about the reflection pond? And it's obviously that last little bit that I added in the first one that made you all ask that. Now, this is a little bit unconventional for me. I usually script and plan my videos very carefully, but I decided because you want it now, I will make it now because this channel is obviously as much yours as it is mine. So I might make some mistakes. Um, you might hear some pretty bad grammar, but at the end of the day, I think this is gonna be the best way to do it. Anyways, as you all saw at the end of the last video, when I got to my reflection pond the morning after I had put it up, it was pretty much drained. There was hardly any water left in it. And what had actually happened was the sand was actually sucking the water from the, the plastic trough and then depositing it into the little wooden compartment I made at the back. And obviously that wasn't waterproof, so the result was it leaked. And that water that then fell onto the soil below made the camping table actually sink down into the, gr into the ground. So when I got there, the pond was actually standing like this. And that's why there was no water inside. But that was actually a, quite an easy fix. So I took everything apart, dried it in the sun. And then when I put it all together, I made sure to put a nice plastic layer inside. So that even if the sand sucked up some of the water, it would then f basically fall into something that's waterproof. And just for safety, I put a plank under, you know, the legs of the table. And that worked absolutely fine. But that's not where the trouble ended. Um, my camera trap actually didn't work at all. For some reason, it just wasn't picking up anything at the end. And I don't know because that's because it's very old, whether the birds were so small that it didn't pick it up. But what I did see was little birdie tracks. So there were definitely some birds coming down. And at this stage, I was just leaving it there so that the birds can get used to it without me going back and forth into the tent. So I left it there for about a week. Mm. Excuse me, I'm still waking up, so this coffee is very important. I left it there for about a week and then I just decided that I want to move it slightly because I realized that that part of the sand that was in the sun was in the sun for a very short period of time. Even though it was a good period of time, it was a little bit too short. So the big tree behind the tent was casting shadows kind of at bad periods. So I took everything down again and then I cleared a bit right next to the garden where um, there was not only enough space and more sun, but also, um, you know, being so much closer to the garden where we have lots of flowering plants. We've got a massive... Um, uh, what's it called? Um, honeysuckle behind me, which you can see that has lots of flowers this time of the year. And then also tons of aloes that attract things like um, black-headed orioles and starlings. So the hope was if I bring the pond slightly closer to the garden, there's a chance that those really sort of exotic looking birds could go and um, drink there as well. So that's what I did. I basically took it all together, dried it again, set it up again here right next to the garden. In fact, it was right behind that bush behind me. And um, that's when I actually got into the tent for the first time to do a proper session. And that's where the next thing went wrong. The sun hitting at the back of that tent just turned it into an oven. It was impossible to spend a long enough period of time in there. So I realized that I was going to have to move it again. So Remember also at this stage, I, I, I'm, I wasn't doubting the, um, you know, the success of the actual design of the pond. It was just, I couldn't find the right place at that stage. So I decided, let me move it inside the garden. Um, because, uh, you know, what that would allow me to do was actually stand somewhere in the shade, but with the pond actually being in the sun. And the birds here in the garden are super relaxed because we've got a little feeding station here that attracts things like... Um, Great go away birds, starlings, bulbuls, hornbills, squirrels, franklins, you name it, like a, a, a massive variety of birds and, and obviously the squirrels. And um, 
yeah, I thought that even if I wasn't sitting in the tent and just standing here, that they would come down because, you know, they're used to me walking past you all the time. So anyways, that's what I then did. I brought the, the pond inside and that's so wonderful. What's so wonderful about this design? It's easy to move it around and to take it apart and, you know, put it back together. Um, but the next challenge was the fact that the fence was a little bit too high. So that meant having to put the table onto cinder blocks just to give it a little bit of height. Um, then I made sure to level it perfectly, lifted the back a little bit with two sort of lutter just to make the whole thing level. Um, and it worked absolutely perfectly. But that's where the next problem came in because we've got a fence around the outside to keep the antelope out, things like kudus that used to jump in and eat all our beautiful plants. And unfortunately, because it's so close, this was now showing up in the background. So even though some of the birds started coming down to drink, like little blue waxbills came first, I could still see that sort of bonnock fence in the background. Um, so the next thing I did was I went to buy a piece of um, sort of fabric, uh, sort of a beige fabric that I then just put in the background to try and neutralize that. Um, and that actually worked well as long as the light sort of fell it kind of fell front light onto that sheet um and some birds actually came down to drink um i had some blue wax, wax bulls come down and i think there was a bull bull as well um but the problem was the birds like they do at most underground hides they, they look for cover either a bush close to the edge or they love drinking close to the sort of the little cement walls at the edge um, of a water hole and that's exactly what they did here they went right to the edge and because the sun changes throughout the morning, it meant that even if I lined it up correctly, um, there was a little piece of shadow on the side. And of course, then the little wax wools would go and drink there. So that was really annoying. Mm. So I thought, let me take a chance and actually remove those edges. Because that also meant that if I sit far away, I can see the sandbank clearly to see who's going back and forth, just to get a little bit of an idea who's enjoying the water and not. And um, as I did that, of course, the next thing that happened is the birds went and sat on the side on the plastic to drink as opposed to on the sand. So I've run into so much trouble um, and so many challenges for this little reflection pond to work perfectly. On top of that, we had this massive cold front come um, through. If you live in South Africa, you would have felt it. It's freezing. It was you know, more than two weeks of extremely cold weather. And it seemed to influence the birds' drinking habits as well. They weren't coming down nearly as much. But I'll be 100% honest, the biggest reason why I don't yet have wonderful footage of birds drinking at my reflection pond is because I haven't spent enough time staking it out. And the reason for that is simple. I had this massive trip to, to Botswana coming up. I've just come back from that, as you would have seen with the trailer that I just posted. And that kept me busy, you know, every single day planning things before the trip. And that just simply meant that I didn't have hours to stand at the hide or sit at the hide. I say the hide, the reflection pond, which was really necessary um, as it is in any underground hide or reflection pond. You have to spend time there to get the shots. Luckily, from our sofa and from inside the house, we saw that crested barbets, the dark cap bulbuls, blue wax bulls, Jameson's fire finches, um, grey go away birds, all the birds were drinking from my reflection pond and we saw their little tracks there as well. So now it's just a case of putting it back up and spending more time there. Now, I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. Um, I'm going to wait for it to warm up a little bit. I might move it again a little bit because it's looking a little bit ugly here in our garden. I might move it just to the outside because then I do also don't have the problem with the Bonox fence and I don't have to put up that, uh, that sheet in the background. Um, but I will put it back up again and we will have success. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought. Um, I really uh, appreciate all your comments and, and every single message asking me to make this video specifically. Um, the engagement is half the fun for me. So I really appreciate that. And very important, uh, later this week, I will post the first episode of a five-part series on Mashati Game Reserve. We just got back from there. 
and we had the most epic time. I'll introduce you to all four camps and the amazing photo machine to underground hide where we had elephants coming to drink right in front of us. So again, if you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button with the bell notification on so that you'll get notified the moment that the first video drops. Thanks again for all the support and enjoy the rest of your day.